This is so cool. This is a great optical illusion you can make at home. This is called the Ames window. What is it and how does it work and why is your brain lying to you? Welcome back to Destructive Creativity where we get to examine exactly how all this stuff works. Plus, I was actually able to make a really big one and I can't wait to show you what we can do with this one. It's so cool. All right, so this is the Ames window, and this is a very cool optical illusion. What really got me first looking at this optical illusion it was Ripley's Believe It or Not. They have a couple of museums where they try to trick your brain and do all sorts of wild claims and very fun things, but they had a forced perspective room, which means that two people could go into a room and then they appear to be wildly different sizes, even though the room seems completely normal. So how is this possible? Well, if you're looking from a single perspective, like a camera, or perhaps if you're just standing looking through a peephole, like it was with Ripley's Believe It or Not, um, you can adjust the geometry of the room so that it mimics reality, even though nothing could be further from the truth. So this is an example of that forced perspective because it's taller on one side and shorter on the other. But as it spins, our brains are trained to know that if something is closer to you, it's larger. And if it's something farther away, it's shorter or smaller. But as it rotates, the opposite becomes true because of the shape of the Ames window. Now that's where it gets really cool. Let's go over here, step into my virtual studio and we are going to look at the history and how it works. I've made a lot of these, and once you start making these, it's hard to stop because there's always ways you can improve the design. So I'm gonna use this one. Now, I want to actually show you how to make it yourself. Now, I have created so many of these, and I've played around with the perspectives and the scales, and I think I've found the ideal proportion so that you can make it yourself. Now I'm going to provide that for you down in the description. You can click on the link and it will take you to our website, historyplus.com, and you can just download the PDF. And that'll be just great so that you can make it yourself. Now, what you want to do is you want to be able to take this sheet, because you'll have to print it off, and cut around the outside so that you actually have the right shape. And then you're going to have to cut the windows out. Now just the six window sections, and then color in the shading right here. Now that is important. Now what you're going to have to do is transfer this to the other side. So what I like to do is just take a pin and poke through the holes at each location and then connect the lines on the other side. Color them the exact same and then hang it from a string and voila! It's perfect! This is a really cool experiment and I encourage you to do it yourself. Now, Let's take a look at the ones that I've made and actually see what the effect actually is. Now, as this spins, if it's done correctly, it should look like it's flapping back and forth. And not everybody can see this, but the vast majority of people do. Part of this comes from the carpenterization of society where we see right angles everywhere. Your houses, your walls, your doors, everything is made of right angles. But this is not. And when you're looking at things, you're not actually seeing squares, you're seeing trapezoids because everything is dis distorted based off of your perception and your perspective. What this does is it plays with it. Now, this did stop, so I'm just going to wind this up again, and I'm going to show you how this can get even weirder. Weirder? Even more weird? Whatever that is. All right. So as this is spinning, it looks like it's flapping back and forth instead of turning in a circle. But clearly, it absolutely is spinning in a circle. So what happens if we introduce something else that we can stick into this model that we can clearly see is rotating? Let's find out. I'll just stick this ruler right in there and have it balanced. Now, because this is not a forced perspective ruler. You're going to be able to see the ruler rotate very well. But the window is still going to have the illusion in it. So let's see what this does.
It looks like it's completely impossible. And yet, it works. Somehow, they're rotating in opposite directions and then flip. This is so cool. This gets even stranger. I'm going to attach a couple of origami cranes to either side, which, is, which are clearly going to be rotating back and forth. There we go. It appears that the origami cranes are flying around the window as the window flaps back and forth. What a cool effect. That's so cool! So who invented this really cool forced perspective thing? Well, it was invented by Adalbert Ames Jr., who was an American scientist who lived and worked in the early 1900s. And he was brilliant. He made contributions in physiology, psychology, uh, ophthalmology, all of the ologies essentially he had his fingers in. But he is best known for his Ames room and Ames window, also the Ames chair, which is all ways that you can trick the brain into perceiving things that aren't actually true. Now here's a really cool thing, is if you have a single perspective, you can warp reality to make it seem normal, because you don't have the ability to move your head around and see different uh, perspectives. Because perspective is subjective, you can actually have an infinite number of different types of rooms at different perspectives as long as you're at one singular point. Which is why there's such a variety of these distortion rooms in different museums and optical illusions and things like that. The Ames window is phenomenal at tricking your brain and allowing you to see that even though you are perceiving something as true, perhaps the reality is much different. Let's go back to the big Ames window and see how big of an illusion we can actually make. This is so cool. Now this is not just a trick of the camera. This looks just as epic in person as it does in the camera because it plays with your head the way that the perspectives are not the way your brain is expecting them. And that is really cool. This is Destructive Creativity. We'll see you next time. Bye.